It's 11 o'clock in the morning here on the 15th day of August, the day before my mom's birthday. It is still foggy and cloudy here at Site B. But hey, how many times a week do you hear me talk about Level Up Advanced 5th Edition? These guys should like be my unofficial sponsor considering how many times I talk about them. Level Up Fat Advanced 5th Edition may have been the first 5e retro clone. At least that I'm aware of. There might have been ones before this. Uh, came out about the same time Tasha's Cauldron of Bubbling Nonsense came out. Uh, there were, of course, all the announcements of changes that uh, Wizards was going to make to D&D and all the announcements of changes that Paisel was going to make to Pathfinder 2nd Edition around that time. And then Tasha's was coming out. And these guys said, you know what? We're going to make our own version of 5e. We're going to take what we like about 5e. We're going to upgrade it a little, make it a little harder, make it a little more appropriate for the 5e engine and take all this uh, nonsense and regurgitate it. I'm using that word a lot lately. Regurgitate it into our own take on the changes that they're making. So they made it and they have been pretty much nonstop creating and publishing for it since then. They remained relatively quiet during the whole January OGL OSR fiasco. They just kept making product. They didn't say that the uh, ORC OGL affected them. They didn't say it didn't affect them. I guess they have their own corporate whatever protecting them from any radiant damage that Wizards of the Coast might... Well, actually, it's Wizards of the Coast. So any necrotic damage that Wizards of the Coast might strike them. But yeah, pretty much they just consistently made product through all of January and February. Didn't say anything. Weren't involved in any of the controversy at all. March and April and May with the whole OSR old school and, you know, people bagging on Kelsey and people bagging on Wizards and all this other insults remained perfectly quiet. Just kept making product. And that brings us up to today, the 15th day of August. They are finally releasing a starter box for their Level Up Advanced 5th Edition game system. Maybe a little late, but or maybe perfect timing. Maybe perfect timing considering 2024 D&D is right around the corner. And if they're going to be the uh, the company that's going to gobble up your 5e player base when they get tired of Wizards of the Coast, who knows? They've definitely the most entrenched. And they definitely, as far as I know, have the least amount of controversy associated with them. I mean, if there isn't, I've never heard it. So let's see what you get in this starter box. There's a Kickstarter. You can get notified right now. Uh, link down below. You get the 66-page rule book with upgrades your game from 5e to level up advanced 5e. You get a three-part adventure path. You get five pre-generated characters. You get 91 cardboard tokens for heroes, villains, and monsters. And you get five maps. Five maps. So this is what we have an example character. I mean, you know, it's it's 5e. Strength, Dex, Con, Intelligence, Wisdom, Charisma. And, you know, they use hit points, hit dice, speed. It's everything you recognize. Uh, classes look a little different. They've got uh, culture and uh, heritage instead of race. And background, I guess. Sure, whatever. Why not? Okay. I think we're all just going to have to accept the fact that race is, is gone. And just as long as, you know, if you, just as long as there's no the, none of the controversy um, associated with it. Yeah, the sheet looks pretty much what we know. I mean, I don't see anything that greatly different. It points at dice speed, uh, culture, heritage. All of this you can see by checking out the link. Uh, the Kickstarter is starting in a few days. I might actually do this one. I mean, if I'm going to have a token 5e in my collection that uh, can pick up the slack when 5e hor may possibly dies in 2024, and if there is still an interest in playing 5e adjacent type games, this might be the one I pick up. Because they, they have consistently been making product. They have remained controversy free. They definitely know how to mass advertise their product without attracting any negative peso and the orc already has some huge negative connections to it uh tales from the valiant has managed to drag up some of its own controversy and a lot of people saying yeah no dagger heart still missing in action uh, and shadow dark is what it is but you know kelsey's bar pretty gonna have to much start reaching gonna be hitting the what's next kelsey soon and it's not really a 5e adjacent it's more of an osr 5e love letter 
So this could be the best bang for our buck for the post 5e retro clones being as it was one of the first. It's remained consistent. It's remained controversy free. It's remained constantly making just product constantly just they just make product and they talk about the product. They kickstart their product. They tell you about the product then they just make new product and they support the pre-existing product, which is something that the others aren't doing. Even Wizards doesn't support their own product line. They just toss it aside, completely forget about it, and move on to the next product line. When was the last time you heard them mention, you know, spells, Spelljammer, or Ravenloft, or Strixhaven? They don't. They just, they just abandon it. So, yeah. Link down below if you want to check out the page and the Kickstarter. Looks fun. This one I might back. There you go. Some news about product, because that's what I do.